Hi, I'm Penelope. Hi, I'm Mar. Hi, my name is Jessica. Our group selected the film Monster because it was one of the suggested films for this assignment, but also because we thought that the story itself was very interesting. The main character played by Charlize Theron commits multiple crimes and the movie is based off of a real life story. So this movie is perfect for this assignment. This film is based on the real life story of Eileen Wilmus, played by Charlize Theron. She is a prostitute that has lived a hard life. She has been sexually abused, raped, and did not have much of a family to raise her as well as no friends. As a result, she turns to living on the streets and prostitution as a means for making a living. She meets Selby Wall, played by Christina Ricci, who is young, innocent, and reserved. The two fall for each other and start a romantic relationship. Eileen meets with a John that beats her, tries to rape, and kill her. She kills him in self-defense and then tries to leave prostitution, but finds she has no other alternatives and falls back into her old habits. Unfortunately, she continues to kill more Johns. Meanwhile, Selby is along for this horrible ride. Eventually, Eileen is caught by the FBI and is sentenced to death. The character Eileen commits the crime of prostitution, murder, and theft in this movie. I personally do feel empathy for someone that has been through so much in their life, uh, such as our main character in this movie. It is just unfortunate the life she has lived and how she has been treated by people. Some people might think this sort of behavior makes Eileen crazy, but could Eileen successfully plead insanity in a court of law? That might depend on what insanity defense defense rule is on the books in the jurisdiction in which the crimes were committed. Let's look at different types of insanity defense rules and find out. The Manhattan rule came out in the mid 1800s when Daniel Manhattan mistakenly shot and killed the Tory prime minister's secretary. His intention was to kill the prime minister because he thought the Tory party was persecuting him. The jury at his trial found him not guilty for reason of insanity. This was very upsetting for the public at the time. So the House of the Lords created the Manhattan Rule to formalize when a person could be acquitted from a crime due to suffering from a mental disorder. This rule is still used in jurisdictions in present day. Basically, if it can be proved that an individual has a disease of the mind, and if they knew that the crime they were committing was wrong or not in order to apply this rule. The problem with this is what is tex technically defined as a disease of the mind, schizophrenia, autism, PTSD, alcohol, and drug abuse. In the case of Eileen, I feel that if you are speaking technically and know that PTSD is a clinical men mental disorder, then we could argue that she has a disease of the mind. I would say that Eileen suffers from PTSD and alcoholism. Her years of sexual abuse have definitely caused her to suffer from PTSD. It is likely that Eileen would be able to use this insanity defense rule given her life story and what she has been through. The second rule in question is the irresistible impulse rule. This rule was first applied in Ohio State in 1934. It broadened the conditions under which a criminal act could be considered the product of insanity to include acts of passion. As of now, only a very few states still use this rule. At the time of the crime, the individual was driven by an irresistible impulse to perform the act or had a diminished capacity to resist performing such act. This rule is unique because even if the person knew that the act he or she was committing was wrong, the person could still be absolved of responsibility for performing the act. If he or she was driven by this ir irresistible impulse to perform the act or had a diminished capacity to resist performing it. In Eileen's case, um, since she feels like she would re-experience the fear of becoming the victim of rape in most cases when she meets her Jones, 
So in a sense, her behavior could be backed by the standard of this rule. When she felt overwhelmed by fear and recollections of bad memories, she could potentially feel the irresistible impulse to self-defense again, which later on turned into murders. The character would not likely to successfully use the insanity defense under this rule, however, because while in some of the cases she felt in danger of being raped, there are times that she intentionally committed murder for reasons other than experiencing the impulse, such as when she killed for money or when she killed for eliminating witness. The Durham Rule. The Durham Rule was produced as, a third, as the third for defining insanity when Judge David Baslon further broadened the criteria for the legal definition of insanity in his ruling on the case Durham versus United States in the year of 1954. This rule, however, was dropped by almost all jurisdictions by the early 1970s. According to this rule, insanity defense could be accepted for any crime, or as long as the crime has to, uh, as long as the crime is a product of a mental disorder, um, mental disease, or defect. This rule allowed defendants to claim that the presence of any disorder recognized by mental health professionals was the cause of their crimes. The rule did not require that defendants show they were incapacitated by their disorders or did not understand that their acts were illegal. Um, in this case, the character's behavior could be partially backed by the standard of this rule because Eileen has had long history of being in her line of sex work and had history of being abused and was victims of sexual brutality. So she could very well experience PTSD or having other types of disorders causing her to not be in her best mental state. Um, I think this route would be a relatively good one for Eileen to use as the insanity defense because from what I'm seeing that she does have a long history of suffering and pain. Her backgrounds are typical of causing mental illness in people in general. So if mental health professionals could diagnose her, especially judging from her past, she could at least attempt to use this um, insanity defense under, under the Durham rule. The fourth rule is the American Law Institute rule. The American Law Institute developed the fourth factor for determining the admissibility of the insanity defense in 1962. Dissatisfied with the current legal definition of insanity, a group of attorneys, judges, and researchers affiliated with ALI collaborated to develop a better definition, which culminated in what is known as the ALI rule. A person is not responsible for criminal conduct if at the time of such conduct as a result of mental disease, or defect, he lacks substantial capacity either to appreciate the criminality, wrongfulness of his conduct, conduct, or to conform his conduct to the requirements of the law. The term mental disease or defect does not include an abnormality manifested only by repeated criminal or otherwise antisocial conduct. The character Eileen Warnos drank alcohol daily and saw men as sex predators. I feel that the American Law Institute rule does not represent the case of Eileen Warnos criminal case because even though she does drink alcohol, she was sympathetic to the man who never had sex with a prostitute and spared his life. Warnos was sane at the time of the sexual activity performed on the man. The fifth rule is called the Insanity Defense Reform Act rule. After John Hinckley's shooting of President Ronald Reagan, Congress re-examined the insanity argument resulting in the fifth rule for defining legal insanity, which was established in the Insanity Defense Reform Act of 1984. The American Psychiatric Association definition of insanity was implemented by the Insanity Reform Act of 1983. A person charged with a criminal offense should be found not guilty by reason of insanity if it is shown that as a result of mental disease or mental retardation, he was unable to appreciate the wrongfulness of his conduct at the time of his offense. I feel she has a borderline personality disorder and antisocial 
personality disorder because Eileen Warnos would be kind and sincere with her girlfriend and then go on a serial killing while so soliciting sexual favors for money to support herself and her girlfriend. She had no remorse for any of her victims and Eileen Warnos also kept to herself and was transient. In the character Eileen Warnos does not fall under the Insanity Defense Reform Act rule because she was charged for six counts of first degree murders in which she continued to go on a killing spree and was aware of her actions.